Kennedy Little Dyke and her two friends were on a relaxing drive when the worst occurred, a tragic accident that would drastically change the lives of everyone involved. Find out exactly what happened in this harrowing tale of tragedy and overcoming the odds. Kennedy Little Dyke's life took a tragic turn on May 22, 2021, following a car accident that would forever alter her reality. Amidst the picturesque landscapes of Idaho, the emotional turbulence from a recent breakup propelled Kennedy and her two closest friends, Nakia Molina and Jacob Rasmussen, into a dire situation that seemed more like a nightmare than reality. They had set out to find solace in the beauty of a sunset, an attempt to escape the heartache that Kennedy was enduring. However, their journey back home descended into chaos, setting the stage for a story of incredible survival, resilience, and transformation. The evening had begun with a sense of camaraderie and support. Kennedy, grappling with the pain of seeing her ex-partner cheating on her, was enveloped in the comfort of her friend's presence. I was emotional. I was a girl, Kennedy recounted to Inside Edition Digital, highlighting the raw vulnerability of that moment. The breakup had left her heart in shambles, especially as it occurred merely two days before the crash, making the emotional wounds fresh and unbearable. The sight of her ex-partner moving on so quickly was a blow that set the tragedy in motion. Me and my partner at the time had broken up two days prior, so I was still kind of a wreck, Kennedy painfully remembered. As they drove back from the mountain, Kennedy's tears clouded her vision and judgment, leading to a split-second decision that would change their lives forever. The vehicle veered off the road, striking a power pole and initiating a series of flips that ejected all three friends from the car. Kennedy was the first to be thrown, catapulted into the air and tragically ensnared by a power line 30 feet off the ground. Her injuries were gruesome and severe, a snapped femur and an arm nearly torn off, hanging only by the skin. Kennedy's leg was also severely injured, with horrible flesh wounds and shattered bones marking the worst of it. The sight that met the first responders and neighbors was one of sheer horror. Kennedy, suspended between life and death, displayed a resilience that was nothing short of miraculous. In the process of getting thrown, my arm was actually torn off, was hanging on by the skin on my back, and then my femur was snapped over the wire and hanging in front of my face. Kennedy detailed the extent of her injuries, which, by all accounts, should have been fatal. Yet, fate intervened in the form of the very power line that ensnared her, saving her life by cauterizing a major artery in her arm, preventing her from bleeding to death. By a stroke of luck, those same wires also pinched off a major artery in her leg, which prevented her from bleeding out as first responders raced to the scene. The community rallied to their aid, with neighbors and family members finding Nakia unconscious and Jacob bleeding heavily. The severity of the crash had left all three with life-threatening injuries, including shattered vertebrae and broken bones. Despite the dire circumstances, there was a glimmer of hope as Kennedy, Nakia, and Jacob fought for their lives. Kennedy's ordeal on the power line was a harrowing hour of uncertainty and pain. She recounted the sensation of drowning in her own blood, a vivid and terrifying memory that underscored the severity of her situation. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these real-life stories every day. Now, back to the story. I remember I was drowning in my blood because it was running from my leg, it was running from my arm, and it was going in my nose, and I was just wiping it out because it was literally drowning me, she shared, painting a picture of the desperate struggle she faced while suspended in the air. The rescue operation was fraught with tension and urgency. As Kennedy screamed in pain and writhed in agony as first responders attempted to free her mangled body from the power line, as Kennedy was finally freed from the wire, her body fell lifelessly onto the stretcher, 
illustrating the severity of her condition as she now fell unconscious and totally silent. At this point, she would be rushed to the emergency room for life-saving surgery. The subsequent journey through recovery was marked by a staggering 21 surgeries, including five amputations as doctors fought to save as much of her leg as possible. Yet, each surgery brought its own despair as her leg continued to rot, necessitating further amputation. Every other day, they were going in and taking more leg. Kennedy lamented the emotional toll of her physical losses compounding the trauma of the accident. Amidst this turmoil, Kennedy's spirit remained unbroken. She recounted the devastating moment her father informed her of the loss of her leg, a conversation that weighed heavily on her young shoulders. Yet in a remarkable display of resilience, Kennedy quickly came to terms with her new reality. I was like, did either of my friends lose a limb? And he said, no. And I said, well, I'm glad I'm the one that lost it since I was driving, she bravely stated, shouldering the responsibility of the crash. Her ability to find humor and acceptance in the face of such adversity was nothing short of inspirational. Within 20 minutes, I was fine with it. I literally named it. I named my nub Gobi, and I made a whole dance for it, Kennedy shared highlighting her remarkable journey from despair to acceptance. Kennedy struggled with mental health issues and the pain of feeling lost in life. The accident, while a catastrophic event, served as a turning point, propelling her towards a newfound appreciation for life and a deeper understanding of her own strength and resilience. Before my accident, I struggled with mental health. I wanted to commit suicide. I did not ever really plan my future because I didn't think there was going to be one. I wasn't happy, she confessed, revealing the depths of despair she had reached. Faced with the reality of her physical injuries and the monumental challenge of rebuilding her life, Kennedy discovered a well of inner strength she hadn't known existed. I look back and I'm like, wow, you're pathetic. But because now, look at me, I'm in a whole different, harder situation, but I'm so much happier," she reflected, her journey serving as a powerful testament to the human capacity for growth and transformation in the face of adversity. Kennedy's story of recovery is not just a personal triumph, but a beacon of hope for others facing their own battles. By sharing her experiences on social media, she has touched the lives of many turning her pain into a platform for raising awareness and fostering a sense of community among those who have suffered similar traumas. With over 382,000 followers on TikTok, Kennedy uses humor, honesty, and a raw depiction of her daily life to connect with others, proving that vulnerability can be a source of strength. Her transition from a victim of a tragic accident to a public speaker and advocate for safety and resilience is a key aspect of her narrative. Kennedy openly discusses the importance of seatbelt safety, drawing from her harrowing experience to underscore the life-saving difference it can make. You know how many people have said, I wear my seatbelt. I never wore my seatbelt, but I do now because of you, she shared highlighting the impact of her advocacy. Through her willingness to relive her trauma in order to educate and help others, Kennedy has found a purpose that transcends her personal suffering, embodying the idea that our greatest trials can lead to our most profound contributions to the world. The emotional landscape of Kennedy's journey is marked by moments of deep vulnerability and incredible fortitude. The encounter with her ex-partner after the accident where he admitted to being scared of her amputation, reveals the complex layers of pain and rejection she navigated. I made a joke like, oh, does it, my nub, scare you? And he said, yeah, actually it does. It really affected me. And after he said that, I just struggled with it, Kennedy recounted, a poignant reminder of the personal challenges she faced beyond her physical recovery. Despite the enormity of her ordeal, Kennedy's spirit has remained indomitable. Her ability to embrace life with joy, to find love again with Alec Bingham, 
and to celebrate the milestones of her journey speaks to a profound transformation. Kennedy hasn't only survived, she has thrived, using her experience to illuminate the path for others and to advocate for a world where tragedies like hers are less likely to occur. Her message is one of hope, resilience, and the unyielding belief that life, even at its most difficult, is worth fighting for. Kennedy Little Dyke's narrative is a compelling illustration of the power of the human spirit to overcome seemingly insurmountable obstacles through her suffering, resilience, and eventual triumph. She reminds us all that it is not the tragedies that define us, but how we choose to respond to them. Her story, woven from threads of pain, courage, and love, stands as a beacon of hope for anyone struggling to find their way through the darkness, a reminder that even in our weakest moments, we possess the strength to rise again. If you like hearing about stories of resilience, bordering on miracles, then subscribe to our channel for many more epic stories of people overcoming the odds.